it's all wax, you know. But like he, this I never understood this. Explain this to me because I know they had um, they had refinery and they had at UNT they had um, they had the uh, the gold. It was like gold crafting. It was um, jewelry. It was jewel jeweler like school. Okay, it looked just like my dad's business inside. They had the vice grips things on the table. They had the wax, the little wax. My, my dad would take these molds, and then he would stick the um, the molds would like they were square, they're male or rubber, and he would stick the rubber uh, little mold that you know you could open them up like a sandwich. It was like a sandwich, okay, and it had like a mold inside, and then you close the mold and you stuck it at, on this little like it looked like a little funnel that you could stick your mouth on almost if you wanted to but hot wax would come out and it would shoot into the rubber and then it would form it inside of the mold then you would pull off the mold and then there would be a wax figure of like a ring or an earring or whatever and you would pick that out with tweezers really carefully and then you would like sculpt it out to make it look like a perfect ring and what I'm assuming they did was they took that piece of wax and dipped it in gold and it became that ring. Isn't that crazy? Or they sprayed the gold around the wax. You know? Wow. Weird. I know. I never really understood it. And even today I think about it. I'm like, how can you spray gold or like, it's a piece of wax. It was blue. And it looked like the ring, you know? But somehow, that little wax thing, you could crumble it with your fingers. You could just smash it. It was sensitive. You know, it was, it was, uh, it was malleable. Big time. Not it was more than malleable. It was fragile. You could just snap it with your fingers. But somehow, that would be either dipped in gold or it would be sprayed with gold. I never knew the process of where the wax went. Like how that piece of wax, that blue wax, how it turned into hard gold without it just disintegrating in the gold. But somehow it happened. And that's how he designed all his jewelry, like thousands of different prints. He used all those molds. And then, then he would just stick them on. They had them at UNT. I went in the room. I went in the jeweler room and I was like, this is exactly like my dad's business. Because my dad had the business for like over 15 years. He made millions of dollars a year doing it. Suzanne went to that school. Yeah. It's, I should have... I should have fucking studied that stuff. I just, I just so fucking crazy and anti dad. You know, I was anti dad. You know, I was like my my. I don't know if my dad appreciated the fact that I was like, I'm not gonna go that way. I'm gonna do do the theater thing. I'm gonna you know, you know, I end up selling, and I know he loves that. You know, because he he had so many salespeople. He worked with Jewish salespeople. He worked with regular salespeople. Well, you know, uh, you know. Christian salespeople, whatever, you know. It's all about religion when it comes to sales. You know what I mean? No, not at all. Okay, maybe not. I, I, I so see the religion part. Dude, I've always seen a salesperson as, as a prophet. I've always seen a salesperson as a prophet. So, I'll tell you this. Whenever I went to the door, there was always someone that had, like, we only go to church. I'm like, do it. I know. No solicitor's license. Right, I know. It's not a no solicitor's notice. It's just so... We do everything by God. <laughs> so like if 